Coming up on this episode of Belief Hole. It's late at night. You're driving on a lonely stretch of forested road. Up ahead, you catch a glimpse of something in your headlights. As you start to slow down, you're thinking to yourself, it must be a deer. It's gotta be a deer. But there's something wrong. There's something about it that's not quite right. It's not quite a deer. As you begin to process what you're seeing, your stomach sinks. As the thing raises up to meet its eyes to yours, its disfigured joints begin to crack and pop into place. And with a predator's stare and sinister grin, it is eager to meet you. This is no deer. On this episode of Belief Hole, we dissect the alleged true accounts of the Appalachian not deer and compare them to strange reports from the turn of the century. Join us as we explore the hooved horror of animal mimics, shapeshifters, and sinister imposters. Conspiracy, synchronicity, sesquatch, homunculus, alien races, Satanism in Hollywood, MK Ultra, Tartaria. There's like a whole. I've been watching this one guy. Like, Close the door, in. Jury, in. close your door. What's the uh, inner earth disagreements? Ghost Dad. <laughs> I like that movie. Dogman, Bohemian Grove, Corey Feldman, magicians are demons, specters, and spirit spooks. summonings, paralysis, strange disappearances, sky whale phenomena, yes. alternative history, shadow people. Shh, quiet. I'm trying to say words with the mouth. It's getting dicey out there. Poltergeists. That's cool. And Naki. What is the moon? <laughs> Elf towers. I would never talk about it. That's old. Y2K. Cover-ups. Apocalyptic catastrophe. Vampire. Vampire. Well, hello, hello, listeners. Well, hello, hello. Welcome to be here. Welcome to Belief Hole. I'm Chris. I am John. And I'm Jeremy, one of your hosts. It's nice to be here. On this Tuesday afternoon, yes. I'm looking forward to the fear that's going to be a part of the show. Yeah, you know, I didn't tell you what this was ahead of time because I wanted to surprise you, but then you always get to see it right before we start. Did that scare you, the image? It was shocking. The image I have in there? This will be in the show notes. It is terrifying. It comes from an artist named Oleg Vodvenko from ArtStation. He's a troubled mind. Uh, very disturbing. Really cool strange, odd scenes from the woods. Can you imagine having that up on your wall? No, it's terrifying. What we're looking at, guys, is uh, a picture of what some people might describe as a not deer. (laughs) The strange, I guess you could call it cryptid folklore, um, supposedly being witnessed having been sighted in the Appalachia Clever name. Not deer. Well, there's a little (laughs) interesting story behind that, too, because it's kind of an accidental, I think, creation of that name, but another word for it is the Dior. D-E-O-R. It sounds a little more uh, believable just because the name isn't the opposite of what... Could this be like a skinwalker? See, a lot of people make that connection with the skinwalker or the wendigo because it is something that is either shape-shifty or it's, you know, a deer-esque evil-looking kind of cryptid. But not all accounts are evil. And I think that there is a conflation with the skinwalker and wendigo, specifically how it relates to native lore and this kind of newer, at least newer, more newly recorded folkloric phenomena called the not deer. But it is really creepy, really interesting idea. Anyways, the image, yeah, the image, John, this is probably more, way more gory and terrifying than most images or accounts of the not deer. I would hope so. Yeah, this is almost Otherwise, like... Otherwise, we've got problems. This is like Pennywise the Clown is <laughs> a not deer. Inflation is not one of them. No, we have a major <laughs> problem. Bigger problems. Terrifying. Extend the hunting season. In the picture, guys, since you can't see it, is these deer, which look like they've been caught on trail cam with these ridiculous mouths with sharp wolf-like teeth oh, sticking out. I didn't out. even realize it was supposed to be on like a trail cam. That's kind of what it looks like to me anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. There's trees in the background. That'll be in the show notes for you guys. Jerry, you said Appalachia, but I've found a bunch of accounts. I mean, whether you believe them or not, there have been reported everywhere from Florida to North Dakota to Pennsylvania. And also, this is a newer phenomenon, like I said, but at the same time, we're going to get into that a little bit, how this started online. There's a guy from the Skeptical Inquirer who kind of tracked that down. But then I found accounts of quote, not deer, uh, from 1939, 1950s. They just weren't titled that. The basic idea, the very loosest description of the not deer is something that is like a deer, but is not quite a deer. There's something wrong 
with the deer that's unsettling, disturbing, and you can't quite put your finger on it necessarily at the time, but there is a list of consistent descriptions that are very bizarre and strange. Right, and some of the more extreme depictions go to pretty uh, out there descriptions. Yeah. Like skin falling off, bones poking out, um, walking with extra joints, forward-facing eyes, predatory-like, you know, multiple eyes sometimes. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Spider. It can be extreme. Yeah. I'm going to list in a moment here some of the more consistent descriptions that can help you kind of organize in your mind what a not deer is versus, you know, other strange monsters or even something more normal. Right. And of course, this is definitely one of the more far out topics when it comes to the strange and unusual you might find in the forest. Um, yeah. So this is the thing. I want to say this right now because, you know, any of our listeners who've been listening for a while know that we are not... Not huge fans of creepypasta, at least not in the sense of presenting it on our show. We don't do that. Right. This is a creepypasta-free zone. Absolutely. Yes. We look for the true. Exactly. Or possibly true. Or at least. possibly It true. has to be at least allegedly true, and the more credible, the better. You know, we dig down, and there are stories, and I have to say this as well, uh, because the not deer is a newer, more newly reported phenomena, most references are online, if not all. And so you're going to find stories from Reddit. We have to use Reddit. We have to use places like 4chan or wherever. But at the same time, they're not all going to be from there. Right. But when we do that, we do look at the backgrounds of the people, the users who post these stories, just to make sure that they're not, you know, budding authors or posting creepy pasta type things that, you know, I think, Chris, you found some examples of some people who like, they also posted about their marriage, but nothing else necessarily paranormal. Or yeah, we'll strange. get to a couple and of And they're from the area. Well, specifically, sorry, Appalachia and specifically Boone, North Carolina, where this, at least this concept of the not deer originated online. Yeah, I think the one I found later is South Dakota, but it's interesting because in their account, they reported that they were making a Reddit account specifically to share this story. And that turned out to be true. I looked into the profile. Not only had they started the account to tell this bizarre story, but then the rest of their posts from then on, they're still active. And they talk about, you know, what they like to make for dinner. Right, just random know. things. Right. So it wasn't like this continuation of telling bizarre stories on formats. Yeah, yeah. But let, we'll get to some of those stories in a moment. First, let's just break down a little bit what we're talking about here. So in this episode, we're going to be discussing, well, the not deer, obviously. But these can also be referred to as a larger category of things. Well, I don't know I, if there's a name specifically for them, but you could call them animal mimics. Right? Things that pretend to be something but they can't quite get it right. Like you mentioned earlier, John, like a skinwalker, that idea where even in, I think in skinwalker lore from specifically the Navajo, um, I think there are some other tribes that also have the skinwalker lore, but we have done that episode in a long time. But the idea that, that there might be something off, whether something has shifted into this form or is using this form to pretend to be something, whether you want to say it's an extraterrestrial, you know, <laughs> there's all kinds of strange explanations for these things that look like deer, but there's something wrong about them, something unsettling. Some of those attributes are often, and this isn't that amazing off the bat, but oddly tall, right. very tall. Deer are not that tall, but these things can be very tall. There have been ones that have been reported that are much smaller, which is kind of interesting, but generally they're taller have more or less joints than they should, or joints that bend in the wrong places. Their legs are bending in the wrong places. That's um, creepy. Front-facing eyes, like a predator. So herbivores have eyes on the sides of their head that gives them a near 360-degree view so they can see any predators approaching, whereas predators have front-facing eyes so they can lock on to prey mm-hmm. and track them down. Deer should have herbivore eyes on the side, but in these reports, in many of these reports, they have oddly scary predator front-facing eyes. <laughs> I wonder what that looks like. Razor sharp teeth or wolf like teeth. Oh. Razor sharp seems a little out there for me, but maybe wolf teeth. That's a little more in the realm of believability, unless you have anaconda mouth. There is a deer or bow constrictor mouth. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs> <laughs> that does not look scary. That version looks like someone who just works in the DMV. It's a deer with that a bad so job. That is weird. That is great. In the show notes. There was a really good video that I happened to come across during the research from a Myth Junkie on YouTube. And she gave a picture of some chapel or something of a mural of a sheep. And the oh, sheep, yeah. they had restored the mural. I think when they had um, were restoring it back to its original state, the original sheep didn't look like a sheep. And the difference was it had lower ears on the side and its eyes were forward facing. And it left it in that uncanny valley territory that we talk about. What is it? I don't get it. It's a bird. Yeah. With eyes in the oh, front. In the front. Okay, I read the mortgage thing on top. I thought it was like a meme or something. Oh, look. Is this just like a list of animals with... Yeah, what it would look like if they had eyes like humans in the front. That's so weird, dude. (laughs) 
That is bizarre. Yeah, birds are also chickens. They have eyes on the side so they can see predators. Well, you know, mutation, that's always a possibility for some of these accounts, right? Right, genetic deformity. There's a CWD, which is chronic wasting <laughs> disease. Yes. John's having a good time over there. <laughs> they look so much friendlier. I know. I thought it would make things more scary, but visually, it seems to make things friendlier. Just dopey yeah. looking. Is um, that how they look at us? What, dopey? Because we have eyes in the front of them? <laughs> They're like, humans are adorable. Just for John, we're going to put some images in the show notes of animals with eyes in the front of their heads because they can look very dopey. But I think scary in this instance. I did want to say, uh, because you're going through the kind of the, the outline of what these things appear to look like yes. or look like when they appear to people. And I'm going to use the term synchronicity here because I don't know what else you would describe. Someone's going to have as. to drink for that. I know. But this is a true story. We went to our friend Zach and Deanna's the other night for a fire. And we had just changed the topic from what we were going to do to the not deer. And we were not sure how we felt about that decision, but it was just such a coincidence that we get there. Their house is tucked away in the woods, beautiful property. You walk into their home and John, I don't think you've been there, but uh -huh. it's just big glass windows all the way around this big A-frame in the forest and no drapes or curtains. So when I walked in, I was like, do you ever get like creeped out at nighttime in here? Cause at our folks place, we have that one big picture window, like that alone yeah. is creepy. Their whole large living room is, is circled with these giant windows and they're in the forest. And I was like, you ever creeped out? And he's like, no, not usually. But you know, what's weird is I think it was the night before we got there. It's like last night I woke up at 3.33 in the morning and normally that stuff doesn't bother me. It doesn't, I don't believe in right. the, the witching hour, the witching hour, things like that. So but for some reason I felt very unsettled by that, that night. And I went down to use the bathroom downstairs and I walked into the living room and I suddenly felt like someone was watching me and I looked over at one of the large windows and there was a deer staring at me. Oh, weird. Like spotlighted by the searchlight, but right up close to the window. And he said, the weird thing about it was it was bizarrely tall, which is just so strange because that's such, that's like one of the biggest things people report when they see these not deer. And it's so weird that Zach had this experience the night before the day of that we switched it that night we go over there and he's like, I did have this weird experience with this absurdly tall deer that came over and stared at me and watched me through my window. And that's at three too, in the morning. The feeling of like, what are the chances that he just had that experience? That's weird. We hadn't even told him what our topic was. Because right. also the feeling of being watched and the uh, unsettling feeling of sentience that whatever this thing is has a consciousness and awareness beyond most animals. Right. That it knows knows you. Sometimes there's a sense of it looking into your soul. And we've heard that with other stories of, you know, entities, mm -hmm. things, even imposter, imposter entities. Right. Um, okay. Some other attributes here. Oftentimes, John, this will freak you out a little bit. Human eyes. Mm -hmm. They have human eyes, like a human. Oh, with the, with the white. Yeah. The, just, it has a human the iris. iris. And like, basically you look like someone put together. To a imagine human. what that would look like. Yeah. Take a, we'll take a look at a deer's a deer's eye, a deer's eye compared to a human eye. It's like a cow eye. The nice big black, just pearl in the side of the skull. Yeah, it has like a ruminant animal kind of eyeball versus... Ruminant? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Ruminant is like sheep, cows, you know, that kind of stuff. There's a definition I could look up, but you guys can do it at home. A ruminant is a hoofed herbivore grazing or browsing mammals that are able to acquire nutrients from plant-based food nice. in their gut. So that's kind of the breakdown of some of the regularly reported consistent, I guess, attributes of this phenomena, this cryptid, whether you want to believe it's just folklore. This is kind of how it's categorized with these certain attributes. But overall, the, ma the main idea is that there is something wrong with the deer. There's something not quite right, leading to an unsettling experience that can be terrifying at times. And we'll get to some of those stories. But also coming up with this episode, I just wanted to mention we have some other interesting uncanny undulates as I call them. Ooh. Undulates, John, because I'm sure you really want to know this word, because you like words. You're a new word of the day kind of guy. Mm, I'm a wordsmith. Do you know what an undulate is? Is it undulate? No. It should. It's very close to it. it. I don't should. know if it's at all connected. It's a hoofed mammal is an undulate. So unnerving undulates? So is that what you said? uncanny undulates, man-eating horses, <laughs> human-eyed pig children. Ugh, man-eating horses. But well, we've talked about how terrifying horses are. Yeah. All of you equestrians out there shaking their head. This is coming up on this show? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's just kind of, it's connective. I tied them in because they all have hooves and they are problematic creatures in the sense that there are these stories about them. And we're specifically focusing on the not deer, but I think just the uncanny animal, the idea of an imposter or a pretender wearing an animal body, but can't quite get it right. Those kinds of things are what freak me out. Yeah, you know, I brought you the perfect story to fit in with this. My gypsy ghost monster story of the encounter in the forest with the bewitched pig. But if you're not going to do it, I'm going to do the expansion because it's okay, an excellent fine. story. It was good. I just didn't think it fit specifically with you this. You just described animal imposters that are hoofed. 
Uh-huh. This is an animal posture that's hoofed. Yeah, pig. Or maybe not imposter, but maybe possessed, maybe, uh, well, you'll see. It's supposed to be the devil. Right? Uh, you'll have to listen to find out, I guess. Let's do something. All right, let's, <laughs> let's, talk, do something. <laughs> let's talk about the first, so this is the first account of uh, something, modern account of the not deer. Not so much of an account as a report of what this thing is. So in her Tumblr blog, Willow the Witch, I think her name is Madison, um, she first posted in response to someone asking the question, what do you mean by not a deer? Someone had asked about something regarding something not being a deer. And she's from Appalachia, specifically Boone, North Carolina. And apparently it's a common phenomenon. Does anyone want to read this? I will. Okay, John, this is the first mention of the not deer in that form online. Oh, this is the first mention of it online. Oh. Anyone who spends a decent amount of time in Appalachia knows the not deer. If you've gone on the Blue Ridge Parkway at night, you've probably seen him. Now keep in mind, if you don't live in an area with a lot of deer, deer are freaky bastards on their own. They're really big, extremely agile, move surprisingly quietly, and are extremely durable. It's not unheard of for someone to hit a deer and total their car. Once I heard a story of a man who hit a deer on accident and decided to take it home and at least get some good meat out of a bad situation. On the drive home, the deer woke up and absolutely shredded the inside of this man's truck. They're very cute, but you definitely don't want to mess with one. Just keep that relationship in the back of your mind. Anyway, the not deer is more or less what I'd call a folk cryptid. Everybody has their story about it. They're all somewhat similar. You're in a car at night, in a rural, heavily wooded area, and probably a bit lost. It's not wildly uncommon to see a possum crossing the road, see blips of little animals with your headlights. You see a deer, so you, your friends go, Oh, deer! And slow down in case it leaps in front of you. Then you see it more clearly. There's just something wrong about it. There's something about its eyes. You feel your stomach get heavy like a rock. The hair on your neck raises. You sense intelligence that you shouldn't. It doesn't move like a deer. It moves like a... Oh God, what is that thing? Whatever that thing is, it's not a deer and we need to leave. You hit the gas and get the hell out of there. A group of my friends got lost in the parkway once and reemerged with a chilling story. They aren't the kind of folks to lie or over-exaggerate. Among other freaky stuff that happened, the driver claimed she saw a deer in the road. Then she noticed the deer was on two legs. Yeah, so some creepy stuff. That does happen, though. Yeah, I've... Not, not common, but not uncommon. Right, the bipedal. Mm-hmm. And it goes... Nyeh! <laughs> yes. Is that what they sound like? <laughs> yeah, that can that can definitely happen. The walking away or mm-hmm. approaching on two legs for a period of time. There's I remember that being an, an alleged explanation for dogman sightings mm-hmm. at one point. But it's definitely not. No. Because just the way that the animal is shaped, the the dexterity, the agileness, like it's meant to be on two legs. But there are very strange things about this. We do have some bipedal accounts of hooved animals that are very wrong coming up. So to follow up on that, that was from, yeah, her name was Madison and it was from 2021. So we well, have to ask Ruddy, our friend. Yeah, I was going to mention that. Our f- good friend, Ruddy, man. Because according to this person, she said that uh, if you live in Appalachia, you know, everyone has seen a not deer once. We've got a story. Yeah. Well, that's what they refer I'm to. I'm not as. so sure about so that. She, so, the, so there was some due diligence here. Oh, and by the way, yes, Ruddy Man, Ruddy Man Grooming, Get Night Stalker. We'll mention again later, but I just want to mention that because he's from the area. And I, right. I do wonder. I was going to ask him about that. So JD Sword of the Skeptical Acquired did his due diligence and did follow up with her, found this in the original article. Kind of got the uh, the origins of this in the article on the trail of the not deer, and this was interesting. So after she had posted this on her her own Tumblr blog, someone had started the Reddit. You guys might have seen if you've looked into this called Not Deer Stories, and then she responded saying, "Well, this was my original post," and she says, "Within my personal area and the people I run with, there definitely are a lot of stories about the not deer that people will recognize. Like, oh yeah, I have seen that. It's a thing." I don't live there anymore, but I used to live in North Carolina, and most of my stories about the not deer come from the area surrounding Boone. Ultimately, though, my main goal was to share the story of a local cryptid with all the campfire goodness a good cryptid story should have. So when she says, like, everybody's experienced it, that's hyperbole. She's being hyperbolic, saying, like, you know, that's what they call it in her around her friends. But it is something that people do experience. She goes on specifically in an interview with J.D. Sword saying, quote, I'm from the Carolinas, largely North Carolina, until recently, largely the Southern Appalachian Mountain area. The word, quote, everybody 
is a bit of a hyperbole, but at least in my circles of folk who tend to be very open-minded to the spiritual and things that go bump in the night, people knew exactly what I was talking about, even if they'd never heard it called the knot deer before. I won't claim to have invented the idea of the knot deer. It's always been a synthesis of other people's testimonies from the beginning. As far as I can tell, my main contribution was just giving a name to an idea that's already existed for a while. So hmm. that kind of is interesting to just to see the background of it that at least we're, you know, it's not just a creepypasta posted online, yeah. this idea of the not deer, at least according to her and other people who've independently verified that they've experienced things like this out in Appalachia. I did come across a hunter's forum um, looking for any accounts like this. And there was a lot of strange deer activity in mm-hmm. this forum. And so I think that's another thing too, like in the, on the skeptical side, I'm sure there's plenty of accounts of people not being familiar with deer, deer being coming oh, too yeah, close sure. to a person. Then they're, they're like, why isn't it running away? There must be something supernatural. That's definitely... Yeah, and that's that's a good argument, I think, for some stories that are just, you're just not familiar with the deer. At the same time, there are people who are hunters or intimately familiar with deer, live in, in these densely deer-populated areas in the wilderness or mm-hmm. out in Appalachia, in more rural areas that are, they know what these animals look like and there was something wrong with these and it yeah. wasn't chronic wasting disease, which we'll touch on and other Yeah, I mean, if it's something with sharp teeth, it's looking into your soul and standing on two legs. It'd be a different sensation. Yes. And if this comment is true from Bryce Curran on the Myth Junkie video I referenced earlier, that'll be in the show notes. He said, I grew up with this legend. So there's an example of it being something around for a long time, but we called it a Dior in North Carolina. Hmm. I have a friend from Virginia who called it a knot deer. I've not had encounters with it, but I do know that you never acknowledge a Dior. My grandma would always say, first rule of the forest, quote, if you hear something at night, no, you didn't. You see something strange, you are blind. If you hear your name, that's not your name. If you feel something behind you walk the same, never run. It's not there. It didn't happen. And that reminds me of the mimic. Right. If you hear something, call your name. Tim Marjanko mm-hmm. in his yeah. book, Disembodied Voices. I'm just thinking that. Yeah. And that's something you hear, this kind of wilderness lore, the idea of there being the trickster or something out there that has the ability to mimic things, whether it's visually like trying to mimic a deer, for instance, you know, in this case, if that's, if that's what's happening, if it is happening at all, and then calling your name, luring you into a trap yeah. of some kind. Creepy, because it reminds me of when I walked into the woods with that baby deer that came out to me during my lunch break. Mm-hmm. And it came out to me and brought me into the forest with it. Remember in Austin when I was working at Starbucks? Yeah. And like no one believed me that this happened on my lunch break. But just thinking back on it now, like what if I had continued into the woods with it? What if it wasn't a deer? Exactly. So one explanation for this stuff is, as I mentioned, chronic wasting disease or CWD. This is also something people refer to as zombie deer because they, they're wasting away in front of you. It's very disturbing. That sounds sad. Here's a, just a quick quote of that definition. Chronic wasting disease, CWD, is a prion disease that affects deer, elk, reindeer, cica deer, and moose. Symptoms can include drastic weight loss, stumbling, listlessness, and other neurological symptoms. Symptoms, of course, that don't generally include additional joints, predator-like eyes, sharp teeth, front bracing, you know, eyeballs, etc. CWD is fatal to animals, and there are no treatments or vaccines. And I really like this kind of sums up the response to that, the CWD being an an explanation for this not deer phenomena. Monster King Calamity 999 on YouTube. Great name. This is just his uh, kind of response to that supposedly from his own experience. Forgive me for saying, I don't buy it. There's way too many details in the best major sightings that are completely impossible for disease or deformities. If it's disease, then it's one hell of a disease and a legit monster in its own right. That stuff doesn't make sharp teeth, doesn't give them human-like eyes. While it might be able to produce backwards joints, it cannot possibly trigger the legs to drastically grow, strictly vertically, obviously making them tall, and possibly develop a second leg joint set. There's too much that's even more far-fetched in that deformity disease theory. So this kind of breaks down a little bit. Like You're not going to have a lot of these characteristics that people seem to be reporting about this that chronic wasting disease can explain. Yeah, like I think it's definitely going to be a mixture. It's going to come down to, I think, for people... What do you believe? Do you believe, people? Do you believe the person telling this this account? Do you believe that there's motivation for creating, manufacturing this sort of thing, or do you believe there's a possible pattern? Yeah, exactly. And here's another uh, report from someone who has seen this thing supposedly. Also, people have said, well, people don't know what an elk is. They're probably just seeing elk. The elk used to be native to the area. How would an elk be? A- because they're very large. They're just bigger. Yeah. I mean, there's other differences, but not anything terrifying. Here's a person who's supposedly seen them as well as these things and can make the comparison. Tat one guy says, I have seen elk and I've seen not deer. While not deers look closer to elk than normal deers. Is it deers or deer? It's deer. The normal deer. How do you not know that? 
I just hear people all the time say deers, like it's optional. Deers is an accepted plural, but it is rarely used. Uh, to elk, the normal deer, they aren't at all the same. Not deer, at least the ones I've seen, have forward-facing eyes, so he's seen them, supposedly. Unnatural joints, not just more or less joints. Ones that might be bent outwards or legs bend upwards, then downwards like a backwards letter N. I have seen ones with hands or paws instead of hooves, and sometimes have unnaturally large or web-like antlers. I mean, that's very specific and very hard to believe, obviously. Yeah, where does this guy live? Why these could possibly be explained by certain diseases being horribly hurt or you seeing things in times of anxiety, it's hard for me to believe that all those separate things happen together in one deer. Take it how you will, but not deer are completely different than elk. So Mm. that's that. I just want to get that out of the way. I mean, obviously, do you believe these people? Are you open to the idea? Is it just a folklore? You know, I think it's hard too when things are new. You know, and things that haven't been discussed before. Or they're new to the, a large population of right. people. Well, let's get into some accounts. Yeah, let's do it. Let's hear what people are seeing. John, would you like to read an account of an alleged attack? Sure. By a not deer. Now, this is going to have a touch. It's going to feel a little bit like creepy pasta. I think because of one attribute of it. And you'll, you'll hear what that is. But at the same time, we had a listener account of a, was it a black dog? Mm-hmm. That glitched. Yeah, that was a great story. So with that in mind and me trusting that source of our listener base. Yeah, uh, and we had her account. She recorded the story for us. Yeah. So we could hear the authenticity and in maybe voice. We'll, maybe we'll drop that, but just keep that in mind when you hear this because there's a similar kind of phenomenon that happens within this account. I'm not really sure how to structure this post as I've never posted in here before, but I feel like my story can help others living in Appalachia who see deer as harmless creatures. Yes, most deer are relatively harmless, but there's a cryptid that lives among them. <laughs> The attack happened when I was walking home from my grandmother's house around 10 to 11 p.m. a few months back. When I got to my driveway, I noticed a fairly large deer standing under the pine tree in my front yard, which normally wouldn't have been that special. I always have deer in or around my yard, but this one, this was different. This deer was different. It was nearly as large as a horse, and its leg joints were backwards. The thing also had human-like eyes, the type of eyes that you can clearly see intelligence in, not the eyes of your average woodland critter. As I walked closer towards my house, my motion light noticed me and turned on, clearly exposing me. At that very moment, the deer jerked its head towards me and stood up on its hind legs and started moving towards me. That'd be creepy. Except it wasn't walking, it was glitching? Like some sort of 90s video game character suddenly moving from one side of the room to the other. I watched the thing glitch back and forth about three times, then everything went black. And I suddenly woke up on the ground with my phone shattered and my body feeling like a truck had hit me. I still see the thing, but it's never alone now. It stands in the center of herds, staring straight into my soul. This happened in Bristol, Tennessee. Has anyone had any similar experiences? I've done an extensive amount of research on them, but I can't find any other attacks. Just stories about people driving past tall, creepy deer. Man, it's... There is, it definitely takes some suspension of disbelief, but if, if true, if someone did really have an account like this, what a freaking story. Yeah, that comes from Simba XE from Reddit. Weird. Yeah. I believe him. I believe him too. Why not? You know, I'm going to not believe him just so that there's some balance. Yeah. That part did remind me of uh, what, do you guys remember her name? Who did that black dog story she sent in? Was we, it Heidi? That sounds right. That might be Heidi. Although I don't think it was glitching. So this person described it as like it was glitching at pretty far distances. Locationally glitching. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's so many, if this actually happens, suspend your disbelief, guys. I mean, there's so suspend many explanations. Suspend your disbelief. Ding. A sting for that. That could, that could have been better. <laughs> huh? That could have been better. It wasn't really? your best. Suspend your disbelief. Ding. Okay. I liked it. It was good. I think any of you put a little, little sonic juice under it. Great. <laughs> I did like it. Um, different explanations for that, obviously. The glitching part. Hallucination. Was it really glitching? Is this something that's being projected with some advanced tech? It could even be some mind-altering tech. If you really want to go like sci-fi. <laughs> mind-altering Government tech. testing. Maybe a little Montauk project. Exactly. Like testing how to manipulate the mind. You know yeah. what I mean? It's a potential. It could be a guy in a suit combined with mind-altering substances that was slipped into his I think tea. it was an extraterrestrial with a teleportation watch. Another option. A watch? It, needs, it has a watch? It's a convenient place to have a teleportation 
unit device. That's true. Yeah. Who knows, man? Trickster entity. Just very strange. Very strange. But I think it's important to look at these stories. I mean, important if you care about stories that may or may not be true, but finding those corroborative little points in between, like the standing in the middle of the herd is interesting because you have a story coming yeah. up from a reservation mm -hmm. where there's a similar, like hiding within the herd, I think you called yeah. it, which is just a creepy idea. Hiding within the herd. Yeah. That was better. <laughs> That's going to be really useful. It's just you're like the a, future. <laughs> it's like a guitar strike and then like a... <laughs> we'll have to do a lot of stories with that just so we can play that stuff. Cool. Okay, this comes from uh, Texas and I thought this was interesting specifically for the way that the legs moved. This was back in around 2012 when I was a teen. Around this time, I'd spend the summer in Lake Conroe in this middle-class subdivision near the resort, backing up to the lake. I'd go on walks often and was used to seeing wild animals like owls, ravens, falcons, rabbits, your occasional fox, and a deer. I haven't been back since my grandma sold the house. At around 9.30 p.m., I was walking around the neighborhood when I spotted a doe. She was across the street, where the main street that loops around crosses with another residential street, walking out of a patch of woods. It was normal to see deer around there, like I said, but this time it felt different. She was really big and thick in stature and muscle mass, and had a thicker neck and big cheeks, almost like a cow head. She just stood there in the middle of the street, and I stood and watched her. There was a street light overhead, but street lights were sparse there, making everything around her very dark in contrast. We both stood there for about a minute, and she didn't look at me. Then, she walked away, slowly, into another patch of woods on the other side. But not like how a deer normally trots, but like a person with four legs would. I'd never seen the joints above the hoof move like that. I was never scared, but felt kind of quiet on the inside. When she crossed into the woods, I thought to myself, What a weird deer. I don't know if this was a not deer or a deer with a disability or genetic defect, but it stuck with me. The moment was ethereal. Weird. So it walked like a human with four legs. Mm-hmm. That looks hilarious in my mind. Reminds me of the Hoogog. Remember the Hoogog? Yeah. That giant moose creature that didn't have joints in its legs. And it was like 20 feet tall or something crazy. That was a great story. Weird. Okay, Chris, your turn. Me read? Yeah. Okay. This one is a Reddit story, but this is the one that I mentioned earlier where I looked at her profile. And what she said is correct in the beginning here, where she made her account specifically to tell this tale and then went on to make many posts, nothing to do with the supernatural. I think gives it credence. Let's hear it, Chris. All right. I made a Reddit account just to post this because I needed to tell someone. I live in the Midwest, but go to college up north in South Dakota area. One night, I had visited the ER for some pain and was there until almost two in the morning. On my drive back, I pulled over on the side of a two-lane highway, almost in the grass because I was falling asleep at the wheel and needed a minute to wake up. The area I went to school in was really rural and I had driven about 18 to 20 miles to get to the ER in the first place. So I'm sitting on the pitch black highway about 10 miles from my dorm when a deer crosses in front of my car. There were woods on one side of the highway and farmland on the other, so I figured it was just going to get something to eat. A couple of other deer crossed, about five of them, my headlights being the only thing that even showed me what they were. As I'm letting them pass, I noticed that one of them had legs in the back that looked broken. It made me think, Aw, oh, poor deer. Before my sleep haze cleared, and I remember that an animal with broken legs couldn't walk. I looked closer and noticed that its gait was off, walking in jerky motions. It more looked like it was hopping than walking. The other deer weren't spooked though, so I figured I shouldn't be, until it finally passed by and I could see its body. The neck was too long. The ears were too long. The legs looked inverted or bowed almost. Whatever it was, it was not a deer. When the little group finally crossed, I got back on the highway and raced off. Every nerve in my body telling me that I saw something I shouldn't have. I got to my dorm in record time and basically ran across campus, feeling like I'd escaped death. I never told anyone about that. I figured that since it was late and I was on painkillers and very tired, that maybe I'd imagined it. But still, every time I see a deer, a real deer, my body freezes thinking about what I may have seen that night. Now, the reason I wanted to share this one, because I, I thought the follow-up post was really interesting. This is a response to? This is the, a response to her post. This is another person I looked into their account. We'll have links to this very just normal person reporting this account here. And I call it, Don't Stop the Car. Don't you dare stop the car. Don't you do it. Stay in there. Don't stop the car. Okay, well, 
<laughs> Michael Jackson. Like, every tenth paragraph, there's a there's a new sting. <laughs> it's the way I roll. I just I just found out that this subreddit exists. It reminded me of something that was mentioned to me. I live in South Dakota. Three years ago, I was talking with a friend from the Pine Ridge Reservation and mentioned I had to drive through there at night for an upcoming business trip, and I was a little nervous. It's a rough area. Her eyes got wide. I was expecting her to warn me about people or tell me how not to be a stupid white person on the res. Instead, she looks at me dead serious and says, quote, If you see a herd of deer, whatever you do, don't stop the car. They've been seen just earlier this week, hiding in the herd. Slow down if you have to, but don't stop. I know it's true because the sheriff and his deputy were one of the ones who saw them. You need to be careful. They're hiding in the herd. And if they can get to you, they will. I was pretty sleep deprived at the time and I was still thinking she was talking about people and asked if she meant carjackers. And she looked at me like I'm an idiot and said, no, they're dark things. Promise me you won't stop. That's when my brain kicked back into gear and I realized a person wouldn't be able to walk around amongst the deer without them bolting. It creeped the heck out of me. She refused to tell me anything more about it, so I promised I wouldn't stop and left it at that. It sounds like you may have seen the same thing. And many have. It's interesting, because again, looking at her profile account, like there was nothing to indicate that she would just, because it sounds, again, kind of far-fetched, but yeah, she's from this area. You can tell by her other posts, nothing fantastical. So that would be strange to hear. That would creep you out. It's a creepy idea. The idea of like, there's this thing, whatever it is, and it's just existing among the herd and they're unaware that this is an imposter. They don't notice. What is it there for? It's hiding among them. Yeah. If true, it's that's a fascinating and creepy concept. Do you guys remember that YouTube video? This always reminds me of this from a long time ago with that weird thing that some people do that will dress up as sheep. Furries? No, they will actually go and walk among herds of sheep and farm animals. That sounds vaguely familiar. Did we talk about this? It's so Mm -hmm. bizarre. Someone has a, there's a YouTube video. I remember when we first started the show, we joked about it on an off the cuff episode or something. But it was like this guy who liked to dress up and live among sheep. And he would be out there. I don't know if it was on a farm or out on the hills or, you know, with goats and sheep. Forget the exact details. I'll definitely put this in the show notes. I can see getting something out out of like the kinship feeling, you know, just being out there there with your buds. There might have been suggestions that that it was sexual in nature somehow or or just some weird like attraction. But I don't know. I don't know if they ever caught the guy. Maybe he just wanted family. Maybe. Maybe he was a sheep in past life. Maybe he's just doing deep dive studying. You know? That's probably it. Behavioral. Undercover research. Mm-hmm. But it just reminds me of that. Like there's a possibility that some of these, you know, bipedal sightings of people in really like messed up deer costumes. Yes. Uh, there's so much I, I want to say on the subject, but we, we do need to take a break. What's coming up on the expansion? Ah, the expansion. <laughs> the expansion is going to be interesting in some ways related to this topic, John. This expansion I call tentatively strange nature. <laughs> Man-eating plants. Woodland spirits. And we're also going to get into some of the accounts we're not going to get into here. Like, I really do want to get into this. We're going to talk about gypsy lore, by the way. Some really fascinating what that stories. That nature? Good question. Glad you asked, John. The gypsy or Romani culture has lived among nature in a way that the settled folk don't. They the gorgers. The gorgers. I think that's what them. the settled folk. Settled folk are just people that don't travel, that aren't like living by travel. Right. We'll get into this. It's really fascinating. And we have stories coming from gypsy folk. And gypsy is not a racial slur, right? Well, it depends on who you ask. Well, okay, so it's it's interesting because some people find it offensive and many people don't in the gypsy or Romani community. You know, the 14 Times article uses it and that guy is... Yeah, he's working with... He's working with the gypsy community, yeah. the Romani community. And I looked this up online to see, because there's a lot in the Romani community who don't find it to be a slur. Yeah. Uh, and it's also so commonly used that it's English common law. That's right. the term they use. And also... According to Wikipedia, a British House of Commons Committee parliamentary inquiry has described in the report, quote, tackling inequalities faced by gypsy Roma and traveler communities, published in 2019, stated about their findings in the United Kingdom that, quote, we asked many members of the gypsy Roma and traveler communities how they preferred to describe themselves. While some find the term gypsy to be offensive, many stakeholders and witnesses were proud to associate themselves with this term, and so we have decided that it is right and proper to use it. Uh-huh. So I'm going to use it here. Okay. <laughs> so It's a complicated world these days. <laughs> it sure is. If there's any uh, gypsies or Roma out there, uh, yeah, let us know. But it's interesting in the nature connection because they learn to pay attention to animals. And that's what guided them to avoid spirits, ghosts, haunted areas. The big thing about the gypsy ghost stories is that it's always coming across something 
in the woods that is unnatural and mm. usually evil. And what they would do, unlike settled people, you know, they had witch balls, they had good luck charms, lucky horseshoe, things like that. The gypsies didn't have any of that. Although they could have carried them because they're very portable. What they did is they watched the animals, they paid attention to the land, and they saw what animals did, and then they followed suit. For example, they believed that owls were also frightened of ghosts. So they would camp where owls were heard because they knew that they were safe there. If they came across something, they would just pick up and leave the next day and go somewhere else. And they would tell other people they met, don't go to this place, other gypsies in the community, don't go back to this spot. Because this spot of forest is not a place you want to be at night. Interesting stuff. So is the expansion episode on gypsy? Lore? No, but I just love, I mean, there's a couple stories that relate to the gypsy lore. But man-eating plants, though. But man-eating man plants is going to be a little <laughs> bit of it. It's nature in general. And I'm going to tell my evil swine story because I think that's fascinating. And maybe we'll get to some man-eating horses if we don't get them to them in here. Maybe we'll do some of that too. That's true. That's it's going to be a varied episode okay. of strange things, strange nature, and a little bit of uh, plant consciousness. Are plants conscious? I kind of very broad. You're going all the way around yeah. the world here. Chris. I just kept jumping into, there's just a lot of things that led into other interesting. A lot of fascinating anecdotes and stories from yeah. things about strange phenomena in the animal and plant kingdom. But I do think that man-eating horses deserves its own episode. Yeah. Well, especially coming across that book that you have. I mean, are they just horses that eat men or are they just... Yeah. But they're not, are they like more than that? It's about the... Uh, are they just cannibal horses? It's about the conspiracy to hide the reality of what horses are. What? That's right. <laughs> that is right. The <laughs> book is written by a fellow of the Geographical Society, so, uh, Royal Geographical Society, and a uh, major equestrian. So all horses are man -eaters? No, I think they all have the potential. I think they, it's about stories in the past that actually happened that were covered up because of, I don't know, horse it's lovers? because of the, the 4-H club. The animal whisperer <laughs> industry and the people who love horse calendars, this, this <laughs> movement to make horses just these pretty docile things that women love and that, you know, children enjoy and they're I know, but, loving uh, things, but, okay, they're, but I, they're not docile prey animals. They they can go either way. And But why wouldn't we be hearing more attacks in like stables? Because it largely has been bred out of them, but throughout their history, they ate flesh. They ate men. And, and we can get to that. I think it deserves an <laughs> now episode. Now they eat apples and straw. <laughs> they do. Well, they're omnivores. You know? There's so many... They don't eat flesh now, though, do they? They can. And some do. In Tibet, they will feed blood with the straw. In some Nordic countries, I think they may have stopped that in the 70s, but some Nordic countries, they do. They'll feed them fish to keep them warmer. And so they, they can definitely eat meat. They do not have, unlike, I think deer have four compartmented stomachs, four compartments in their stomach. So they... They can digest. That's the signature of an herbivore. Right. I believe horses have a singular stomach. More like a predator? Horses yeah. can't vomit, so... That's true. It's harder for them they to... They can't? Mm -mm. Really? That's yeah. a problem of eating raw meat with horses Right, in so that doesn't quite compute. But that might be evolutionary How after they, we bred so it out. So if they eat something bad, they die? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Or get very ill. Yeah, they can't so puke weird. it up. They have, it has to just get through their system. Well, mm -hmm. I wonder why that is. Because it's an uncomfortable sensation, and at one point they decided to stop doing it. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably what That's happened. That's probably true. They're uh, like, I am done throwing up. It's not fun. I would rather die. <laughs> Don't do it. Breed it out of her, Gina. <laughs> she doesn't like it. But that's why I call this episode Hooves of Horror, because it's not just the not deer. There are, there are scary things about hooved creatures, I think. We need to take a break, guys. Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys, stick around for more not deer and other hooved horrors. In the meantime, enjoy this preview of the expansion, which you too can have if you sign up at beliefhole.com. Click on the big red, join the expansion button, and we'll see you there. Double the episodes. Now check out Strange Nature. Access granted. Mr. Danston, naturalist, who has recently returned from Central America, where he spent nearly two years studying the flora and the fauna of the country, relates the finding of a singular growth in one of the swamps which surround the Great Lake of Nicaragua. He was engaged in hunting for botanical and entomological specimens when he heard his dog cry out as if in agony. Running to the spot whence the animal's cries came, Mr. Dunstan found him enveloped in a perfect network of seemed to be a fine, rope-like tissue of roots and fibers. The plant or vine seemed composed entirely of bare, interlacing stems, resembling more than anything else. The branches of the weeping willow denuded of its foliage, but of a dark, nearly black hue, and covered with a thick, viscid gum that exuded from the pores. Drawing his knife, Mr. Dunstan endeavored to cut the animal free, but it was only with the greatest difficulty that he succeeded in severing the fleshy, 
muscular fibers. To his horror and amazement, the naturalist then saw the dog's body was bloodstained, while the skin appeared to have been actually sucked or puckered in spots, and the animal staggered as if from exhaustion. In cutting the vine, the twigs curled like living sinuous fingers about Mr. Dunstan's hand, and it required no slight force to free the member from its clinging grasp, which left the flesh red and blistered. This is a disgusting story. <laughs> yeah. We hope you are enjoying the break. When the cool light of the blood moon beckons, the midnight call won't be ignored. And every creature of the night looking for love needs the right scent to snare their heartthrob. In partnership with Ruddy Man Grooming, the brothers of the Belief Hole have curated Night Stalker. A beard oil scent that blends the masculine earthy forest aroma with the seductive notes of tobacco and vanilla mm. for a subtly sweet balance that will have your partner purring late into the evening. However the night moves you, Night Stalker Beard Oil is your loyal companion. Yes! So head over to Beliefhole.com and click on the Night Stalker button. Available in beard oil, bombs, and butters. And don't forget to use the code Beliefhole for 15% off your purchase. That's Beliefhole, one word, all lowercase. Night Stalker. For a superior breed of beard. Welcome back. Glad to have you with us. Have we convinced you that not deer are real? Absolutely. I don't think so. But I hope you're enjoying the episode. We're working on it. Our goal is not to prove that it is real, because that's impossible, frankly. Only you who have seen them can know for sure. And those who have not can choose whether to be open-minded and let in the strange and unusual or close off and laugh and snicker. But that will make you a jerk. This is true. Okay, so in looking at this stuff, I told you I would have some strange accounts, and I do, from... Pre-internet times, there is a great resource. I think his name is Albert Rosales. I'll have it in the show notes. But he collects humanoid encounters and different kinds of strange encounters, archives them. Why is that name so familiar? Did we use him before? We used his stuff before as a resource, I think maybe in humanoids and reptilians, potentially. Oh, okay. Great, great resource. Well, that'll be the show notes as well. But uh, one of these accounts he collected, it was from 1939. And again, these are, they're not exactly matching the current not deer phenomena attributes that we've kind of defined. They are basically just not deer. They are, they're like deer, but they're not. They are uncanny in that sense. And there's something unsettling and off about them. You know, we didn't really talk about the uncanny valley. No, we didn't. But that's a big part of this terror. And when it comes to the not deer, it's the thing that's almost correct in appearance and act. But in fact, there's something off. Right. You usually hear it with humans, like the idea of like some robots are very unsettling. Androids Robots made to be human-like, they're not quite right, or dolls, puppets, yeah. things like this. But it's been shown to be a phenomenon also existing with animals. This is exactly an uncanny valley type situation when you have a deer that's, you can't put your finger on it first, but you start to realize it's not a deer. There's something wrong about it. And it's those little elements that maybe give a clue that there is something pretending. And that's what's creepy. The imposter. Whether it's an imposter or if it is something just yet to be identified, categorized, but there seems to be something supernatural going on here, generally speaking, with this phenomena. For example, as I said, these might be a little more mundane, more cryptid-esque, but they are just not deer. In 1939, February 11th, in the afternoon of Westwood, Pennsylvania, a farmer, Sylvester Scott, was spreading fertilizer when he noticed his dogs were restless and excited. Then, nearby, he spotted a strange creature, which was two or three feet high, so a little guy and was colored like a deer in front with white on the flanks. The silent creature was less than 50 feet away. It had paws rather than hooves. What? It had a foot-long neck, a small head, and no tail. It jumped two feet in the air, ran across the field, and disappeared. When the creature ran away, the dogs refused to follow it. He saw the creature three other times and heard its screams during the night. That is an awesome account. I like that a lot. That sounds like something just that shouldn't be, that it maybe exists in another reality, somehow got into Slipped ours. In. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Very and cool. And that's back from 1939. So the idea that not deer-esque things 
existed or have been identified previously it seems to be the case, but not specifically associated with this phenomenon, but they are not deer. Another example, and this is interesting, Calumet, Oklahoma, 1951, in the evening, Mrs. Lawrence Laub had gone out to check on the cattle and had walked to the top of a hill between the farmhouse and the pasture and looked down to see a weird, quote, something. Its head and body resembled those of a deer, but only superficially. The animal standing on four thin deer-like legs, but with huge pads for feet. Weird, pads again. And long hair, slightly lighter in color than a German shepherd dog. It was larger than a dog, or a wolf, and had small pointed ears and a bushy tail. Mrs. Laub watched it for about a half a minute, then picked up a stick and tossed it toward the animal, whose head was turned away from her. The stick attracted the creature's attention and it turned to watch Mrs. Laub, apparently curious, but not at all afraid. Hmm. This proved too much for the witness. Quite unnerved, she beat a retreat, all the while glancing over her shoulder at the animal, which continued to study her. Her husband had seen the same or a similar creature two years previously, and in the meantime, neighbors had reported coming upon strange tracks in their fields. Are there pad-footed deer-like creatures wandering about. Interesting. That's two kind of corroborative accounts. And on, Weird. That's, and that's the key. It only resembled a deer superficially. Yeah. Meaning there's something that's just not right about it. It's not It's not a deer. I almost like these accounts more because they're not They're not frightful. They're just the strange animal that seems to make Be an appearance out there. once in a while. Yeah. yeah. More just in the kind of cryptid realm and less in the terror yeah. territory. I did, I did want to mention that uh, deer do eat meat sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes... Eat people meat. People like meat? The meat of people? The meat of people. People burgers? Human flesh. Well, specifically bones. Recently, a study came out showing, it was a, a body farm in San Marcos, Texas. In their research paper, they were quoted as saying, undulates too will partake in human flesh <coughs> if it's available. There's a screen captured on a uh, trail cam of this little deer with a rib bone, a human rib bone in its mouth. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. It was consuming it. Not so cute then, huh? What was the human doing out there? It was a body farm. So where they study the decomposition of bodies over oh, a period weird. of time. I know. That's a creepy thought. It's the first time ever captured a deer eating a man. That's crazy. Of course, a dead man, but... It's a body farm, so they watch how bodies decompose? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a study but that... I wonder if there's other animals out there that would eat... There are. Okay. And that's yeah. part of the study, too. Okay. It's like what animals will you. usually, you know, scavengers and things. But this is the first time it's been recorded that a deer has. I thought that'd be kind of a cool thing to do. What you do with your body? Donate it. Donate it to that. It just sounds so natural. Just laying on the ground. Yeah, but getting picked at and... I mean, you're not there. Just put me in the ground without anything. At least bury me, but I don't need, like, a box. You know, bearing sounds scary. Although the health department might, might want me to have a box. Anyway, I just thought that was interesting to mention. That image will be in the show notes. It's pre, it is pretty creepy. <laughs> just the sweet little deer with a rib hanging out of its mouth. He, he look at him. He knows he's doing something wrong. And they will eat. They will eat meat, flesh, if they lack minerals like phosphorus and stuff. But again, it's hard for their guts to digest. They got that compartmented stomach. Now this brings us to the I think maybe the most interesting part of the episode for me anyway is the the idea of the animal imposter, the dark pretender, possessed livestock, if you will. Unnerving Encounters with Sentient Beasts. There are some really great stories from this. I'm sure a lot of you guys know this channel out there. It's called Beyond Creepy. Oh, yeah. And I've recently been watching a lot of his videos, and they're really good at just getting the weirdest, creepiest, kind of unique stories out there. And that's where these come from. Definitely check out his show. We'll link it in the show notes. So go there, subscribe. You won't regret it. This one. So these were accounts from his listeners that he that had been submitted. Yeah, there were yeah listener stories that were sent into him. But the one I found really interesting was one that took place in 2019 when a man working on a farm experienced something unexplainable. He was carrying out his usual feeding routine on the farm. When he got to the sheep pen, he noticed something that he thought was a sheep hanging from a fence post. But as he approached it, he realized the sheep was standing on its hind legs. Ooh. So the man freezes at this point, right? He's only about 10 feet away from the animal. And he said, quote, I just stood there in silence for a moment. After maybe 30 seconds of standing still, the sheep turned around and looked at me. It didn't even seem phased that I was watching it. It just said, Oh, good morning. Dropped back on all fours and went to eat with the rest of the sheep. It was a man's voice, but it sounded off, the guy said. He said it wasn't malicious. It was actually quite polite. That's awesome. Said, quote, I genuinely have no clue what happened here. I'm not schizophrenic, and I know I wasn't hallucinating. I just don't have a clue what I could have seen. That's just, that is bizarre. bizarre. You weren't supposed to see that. <laughs> That's the next story. 
Thank you for reading That's the title. Creepy though. though, huh? When I did it, what a dream come true! <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that. I was gonna say, it would be <laughs> imagine walking downstairs like that last story, walking downstairs into your home and seeing Jake in the kitchen in the morning doing dishes. He just stands up and looks at you. and Goes, "Oh, good morning." Oh, I was wondering when you were going to get out of bed, sleepyhead. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bizarre, dude. That reminds me of probably the earliest dream I remember. It was a reoccurring dream of Sandy, our golden <gasps> yeah. retriever, talking. Yeah, it was in the kitchen. I fed her syrup and it allowed her to talk, but she talked to me in an English accent. I remember that. <laughs> it's like my earliest sure dream. sure it wasn't Sydney? No, it was Sandy. It was at Canal Fulton. Stonewood. Huh. That was so bizarre. That's just weird. That struck a memory. Well, hi, Jeremy. Want to go outside play? It was British, wasn't it? Uh, oh, hello, Jeremy. Hey, governor. Want to throw me the ball? But that brings up the... Okay. okay. All of our British Bad. audience is like, what the <laughs> actual heck? Morning, governor. That be my stick it is. Give on, give it a toss. Oh, good lord. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry. Where am I at? You weren't supposed to see Oh, that. yeah. But that brings us to the idea of possessed animals. Possessed yeah. by people. Is that possible? Is it possible to incarnate in an animal or just... Possess one temporarily, maybe some sort of temporal flux or dimensional overlap uh, glitch in the matrix can put someone in an animal's body. Is that possible? Heck yeah, why not, you know? Sure. In the whole, anything's possible. But it's interesting to ponder this next story, which John, I'll have you read a quote from. As you said, John, it's called, what was it called, John? What? What was the next story called? You weren't supposed to see that. (laughs) This also comes from Beyond Creepy, and it is Beyond Creepy. In this account, two brothers, 119... The other 17 were visiting animals at a local university farm in the United States. Now they got to the sheep pasture and they observed a sheep looking like it was slouched, head first, dead in a feeding trough. And then the witness was quoted as saying this. We both were quite alarmed and stared for a minute, sure that this animal was literally laying dead there. Just as I was about to climb over the fence to go check on it, The sheep stood up on its hind legs, looked slowly over at us, still standing, and stared me dead in the eyes. It felt like forever that it was staring, and then, still staring into my eyes slowly, lowered itself onto all fours. We both felt the message that we were not welcome there, and both had this feeling that we had seen something we shouldn't have. I don't know. I still can't explain it. Now, the strange detail given by the uh, other brother who was haunted by the encounter to this day said that when the sheep walked away, it appeared, quote, almost ashamed of the encounter. Weird, right? The witness thought it was was as if a normal sheep had been possessed momentarily and then walked away just as confused as the two boys were. And they were on no drugs and not drinking. That is a strange, strange account. Just that feeling. It's it's more one of those things like, yeah, an animal can walk on its hind legs. Mm -hmm. But there is this common theme of unsettling irrational fear almost sending a telepathic message exactly and actually that irrational fear brings me to the story was actually a response about the not deer from the uh original willow the witch Mm. that i mentioned earlier madison uh root and rock responded and this is someone who has another tumblr but was really interesting was a story that they had collected from a friend and they had also apparently seen the not deer the joints were all wrong and there's some other further details and we'll link that in the show notes one of the interesting things he said was that the shape of the face was wrong in a way, as I describe as, if you had a friend who only draws wolves, they're really, really, really good at wolves. You want them to draw deer. They try their best, and neither of you are exactly pleased with the results. So the idea that it yeah. has a wolf-like mouth, these not deer, or at least in this person's experience, what he saw or she saw. And the joints, of course, the bends were not where the bends should go in a normal deer. I thought the most interesting was a story that they had collected from friends who were on a ghost hunt in southeastern Oklahoma. And then on the way back from the ghost hunt, they saw on the road what they described as, quote, like a deer that stood in the middle of the road and refused to move. So when one of them got out to shoo it away by hand, they all realized about the same time that it was only almost a deer. They described the collective reaction as wildly disproportionate to what they remember having seen, which was just not quite a deer. They said there was about 15 minutes of foot to the floor speeding before they all, right about the same time, felt a change in mood come over them and they all began to sob like, quote, little scared kids. It was only weeks later that they were like, you know, deer don't look anything like that. Weird. So the idea, almost sobbing like a, is weird. It reminds me of a screen memory mm-hmm. in this yeah, case, right? Point. You stop some things in the road, you get out. For for whatever reason, this thing just doesn't look quite like a deer. You get back in the car and you speed off. And then when you try to remember it, 
None of you can quite describe it exactly the same way. You just knew it wasn't quite a deer. Deer don't look anything like yeah. that. For whatever reason, that's hard to put your finger on. Screen memory is an interesting concept when it comes to this phenomena, Mm -hmm. for sure. Like something's trying to implant in your brain what you should be seeing Mm -hmm. and it doesn't quite work right. Can't get it quite right. Legs aren't moving right. Yeah, very interesting. It goes back to our imposter entities episode. Mm -hmm. Have some chapstick. It'll make you feel good. Okay, super uh, just quick anecdote here. Something very bizarre that Beyond Creepy also mentioned in that video that we'll link. Uh, Happened in southern Indiana in 1996. Witness was 11. This boy was in the backseat of his car. His parents were driving him after a birthday party at a local bowling alley. They pull up to a stoplight on the way home. The kid in the back seat looks over at this gray station wagon next to him. He notices in the front seat a husky child with a paper bag over his head. (laughs) First, the kid lifts the bag as if to peek out of the bag, but then he goes further and removes the bag entirely. Quote, it was a pig. I don't know how else to describe it. The eyes were human and he had a snout and ears and was a callow pink. He looked around his field of view until we locked eyes. He panicked immediately and fell to the floor. At this point, the whoever the guardian is of this pig boy looks over concerned, and as soon as the light turns green, they take off. And of course, the boy asks his mom to pick up the pace and catch up, but she's like, I'm not going to do that, son. So just Weird. a kid in a front seat, human form, with a paper bag over its head, takes the bag off, and it's up as a, a pig snouted, head. pig-eared pig person. She needs to learn to keep her pig boy in the trunk when she's driving around. But the fact, if it was like a kid wearing a mask or something, first of all, you fall to the floor to hide. Why? You know? Right. I mean, it's just, it's a weird story from a kid yeah. from years ago, but I just, I love those stories where you, you see something you're not supposed to see. Did I, There's something not quite right. Did I ever tell you guys about the time when I was working at Starbucks and that a woman pulled up and in the back seat was a child? I say child in like a very loose term because I looked into his eyes and it was just like demonic. There was something about this you know, like I got this whole, did that ever happen to you? Well, John, you've run into people before that you just felt like were not what yeah. they were. Like th- this was like, a chill went through me when I looked at this kid and he was just staring at me, looking at me with this, no expression, but this feeling of evil. It was really weird. I don't know if I've told that story like before. That. But I don't like that idea. <laughs> it really bothered me. Like I had to, I went back for a little bit. I feel like we've all seen something like that at some time in our lives. Yeah. Something that just has a darkness in them looking at you, mm-hmm. and, you and it just totally takes you out of your day. Like something's very off with that. It's a darkness there. There's a gypsy story I brought here, Chris, mm-hmm. and you'll see why. And it reminds me of, it's the same thing, something pretending. I like this, this account. And if you want to hear more really good gypsy stories, simply check out the expansion. We'll be getting a couple of those. Okay, this story I call The Still Donkey. And this comes from 14 Times issue number 401 from July 2021. Gypsy Ghost Stories. Gordon Boswell, for whose truthfulness I have the highest regard, offers that he saw the devil in the shape of a large black dog. Supernatural animals were so common in gypsy folklore, you couldn't always be certain you were looking at a live one. One of the smiths was stopping in a field in Suffolk and went out after sunset to see to his donkey. Instead of coming up to him and nuzzling for a titbit, the animal stood aloof. Though clearly standing still as a stone, as the owner walked towards him, he receded further and further away, until finally he vanished. And the next morning, the real donkey was found in the village pound, where he had been all the time. So yeah, is this another like just weird, just man. a weird spirit so pretending you, to as be? As you approach your donkey, it's just standing there oddly still. And then you try to get close to it and it just recedes without moving its feet, just floating backwards away from you into the dark. Is it trying to draw you in somewhere? Very cool story. That sounds totally like, I mean, something, some kind of imposter situation. Yeah. Right. Whether it's a projection Or what? Yeah, just, I I love that because it's just so bizarre. Yeah, and and again, we'll be drawing a lot from the 40 Times issue, Gypsy Ghost Stories, exploring the supernatural lore of England's traveling community. We'll be doing that in the expansion. And I do want to mention, that when you look into the the not-deer phenomenon online a lot, you'll find people talking about Wendigo, Skinwalker. I don't think that it really, I think it's a different thing. Um, I think you can have, from what I understand, from our researching for that episode, that you could theoretically have a Skinwalker that shapeshifts transformed into all different kinds of animal forms, except I think sheep. I think that might've been the one that was like off limits Hmm. for some reason, if I remember that detail right. That sounds right. Let us know guys, especially our Navajo listeners out there or anyone on the res, but also the Wendigo thing that comes up. That's from what I remember about the Wendigo is a reflection of your greatest fear. It's a, it's a trickster shapeshifter that can use, use your fear against you. And I think it's most commonly presented online as like this giant misshapen deer on two legs with crazy antlers and but that's just a one representation yeah of it. usually the wendigo is a spirit that would 
possess a person and it would cause them to crave flesh, human flesh. It would cause them to be murderous and oh, kill really? and rage. And there's actually an account of someone who was executed after claiming that he was possessed by the Wendigo. Oh, really? But that's, that's more of the account of the Wendigo that I've come across is it's a spirit and a supernatural entity that possesses a person, causes them to murder sometimes family members and eat them. Less of like a monster in the woods, less right. of a cryptid. One thing I want to mention when it comes to the, the Native American lore stuff, like obviously we are not Native Americans. I know we have some Native Americans that listen to the show. I feel like, like so in that article that I mentioned earlier that did a really good job like tracking down the origins of this not deer phenomena from Skeptical Inquirer, J.D. Sward, I think is his name. The one thing about the article that I just wanted to mention, because I think it's kind of important, there's a section of the article called White People and Native American Magic. And he goes on to say, essentially, that the problem online is that all these people are talking about the Wendigo, uh, different pieces of Native American lore, and conflating it with the not deer, which I agree with to an extent. The only argument I would make is the, first of all, I'm pretty sure that people of all colors and races use the internet right. and are probably on Reddit. Yeah. And genuinely discussing these ideas, regardless of their racial background. Yeah. So there, I just feel like it's a wrong-headed kind of approach. Also, the hypersensitivity around discussing ideas from different cultures. Like, I think that one of the beautiful things about searching and exploring and researching is learning about other cultures. And I think when you're so protective of a culture that you're not allowed to talk about it. I mean, Skinwalker is one thing because, you know, Navajo aren't supposed to talk about it just because of the curse and the darkness that comes along with it. But outsiders trying to keep other outsiders from looking and being overprotective about certain cultures. I, f I feel like there's a, a threat to destroying curiosity, like the genuine interest in looking into other people's cultures mm -hmm. because of a, of an overprotectiveness to preserve it and keep it separate. Also, I feel like, you know, I'm not a professional folklorist or anthropologist, but I feel like over time cultures blend and merge stories and urban legends are created through the merging of cultures like right. the Cherokee and the Irish immigrants in Appalachia. Or the French and the um, African to form the Cajun or Creole folklore. And exactly. Yeah. Like that's what makes stuff interesting and beautiful and keep emerging and changing. And I just feel like there is a danger in being overly sensitive, especially when you're not from that culture, like yeah. the fellow that wrote this article. I think that- just being protective, I think to an overextent, and also creating a kind of division, whether he's doing that on purpose or not. Yeah, I, th I think the valid concern and criticism is when people will just take a bit of Native American folklore from any tribe and place it to something that might not be consistent with their folklore. And I mean, there aren't tons of experts yeah. out there. So I think there's some people that maybe just don't do enough due diligence or where they merge things or, you right, know, I kind think, of Plato things together yeah. to make something fit. Well, I think that the most important thing is being truthful and being you know, thoughtful about where you get your sources and citing them so that you, if something comes from a specific culture or idea, you, you do your best to represent that actually how it's coming from and cite where you got the information. Right. So everyone can do their own research and learn about different cultures and stuff. But yeah, the idea that like, if someone talks about it or is looking into it, that they should be, you know, kind of slap on the wrist. Well, that's silly. It's, I just want to mention that because it's in the article that I referenced earlier that was great with the due diligence part, but that just that aspect of it, I feel like can be detrimental to cultural conversation. Absolutely. And the authentic search for truth. Yes. And I hope we're doing that here. Let us know what you guys think. Was this an interesting episode? Do you guys have thoughts, opinions? Yes. What did you think about the not deer? Let us know. We should probably do the thank yous. Yeah, I think we got some people to thank today. Always. All right. For everyone that's here, thank you so much for supporting the show. We got some special people to shout out, people that signed up to help us a little extra. Uh, in the show, you can do that at beliefhole.com. Click on the Join the Expansion button. You get bonus access to all of our material. And some people go a little above and beyond, sign up as a black-eyed cool kid, or even better, a dogman whisperer. Even more generous folks. And then, of course, the Sky Whale Rider. Sky Whale Rider. Sky Whale Rider. The ultimate in generosity. That's right. The ultimate saddle on the whole. <laughs> it's true. To ride into the night. It's true. He says it. Um, it is true. Is it thank you music time? So thank you all so much. And uh, without further ado, here are our new members of the whole, Black Eyed Cool Kids and Up. Thank you to Travis Emig. Ooh, Travis. Hi, Travis. Thanks for being here. Welcome yes. to be here, sir. First of the day. Esteban is here. All right. Welcome, my friend. Welcome, Esteban. Esteban. Yeehaw. Glad to have you. Brennan Hammett. All right, Brennan Hammett. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Come on down. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> These are very rhymable names. <laughs> oh, an old blast from the past. She, Kat, Kat, 
Cat Caparelli. Did, did you leave and come back, you swine doggle? Swan doggle? She had a baby. She's a. Uh, oh, that's yeah, right. She, she's always been a you, supporter you, of the show. Can you not listen when you have a baby? <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. These are questions John wants to know. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Cat. It's good to see your name. Nice we to see you back. It's awesome to have you. Zach Lane. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you for not staying in your lane, Zach, and coming to the Belief Hole Lane. Right. right. Hop over the yellow doubled line. Morgan. Rootlinger. Ah. Rootlinger. Cool name, Morgan. That is an awesome name. Scandinavian, maybe? Yes. Very hard to rhyme, but I won't wag my finger. Oh, Morgan Rootlinger. <laughs> Welcome to the whole Scott Bozy. Scott Boese. Yes. Scott Booze. <laughs> Scott Boozy. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'm sorry. Scott, welcome. It's so good to see your name, welcome man. Welcome to be here. Thank you for supporting the show. Yeah. Thank you to you, Stacy Kowalski. Kowalski. Right. Why can't I rhyme with any of these names? I'm having a real trouble today. Awesome. But it's still fun to see your names and reading. Welcome in, Stacy. Grab your Beretta and welcome Carletta to the hole. All right. You missed one. Spearman Breeden. Spearman. Spearman. Keep breeding, Spearman. Yes. We need more of you. Yes. People like you. Spearman. Awesome. That's a great name. Yes, John, do you have thoughts about Spearman? I, yeah. I just want to keep saying the name. Is it the first <laughs> first name? Spearman? Spearman Breeden. I don't know. That's a good question. Mm. Maybe it's just like a request for Spearman to continue breeding. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for your support. We appreciate it. Welcome to Felicia Murdoch. Yes. Felicia Murdoch. Hello. Felicia. Bye, Felicia. It makes me think of Dark City. Good movie. Murdoch. John Murdoch. Yes. Go check it out. And hello, Felicia. Welcome to be here. Yes. Bye, Felicia is like one of the most famous movie quotes ever. Yeah, I think we all know that. Yeah, John. that was a fad about five years ago. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Was it a yes, fad? Yes. Bye, Felicia. Yeah, people say it all the time. Bye, really Felicia. I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm sure from Friday. Yes. <laughs> Friday, Friday. Okay, holy lord. <laughs> Kayla Kimball. All right. Kayla Welcome Kimball. Welcome to the show. Go check out The Fugitive. Because there's a guy named Kimball in it. Remember? I do, Chris. I'm just going to keep relating to the hardest movies. groups we've ever had to it's do anything. It's been really yeah. hard, yeah. But that doesn't, that's not a statement against you. You are all wonderful, amazing. We love you, Kyla. Darian Robertson. All right. Great. Robertson. Welcome in. Welcome to be here, yes. Darian. Yes. Bray. Bray is awesome. the day is long. Bray with many Ys. I'm assuming because they're extra excited. Yeah. So if you read it backwards, it's yay herb. <laughs> That's Yay, true. Herb. Yes. <laughs> Welcome, Bray. Great to have you. <laughs> Rob Nope. Yes. Ooh, that's a good last name. I say yep to Rob Nope. Maybe you just didn't want to put in his real last name, so you just wrote mm. Nope. Could we're be gonna, No Pay. We're put the yes sound effect in there. Yes. 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 We did. Welcome in, Rob Nope. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome, last but definitely not least, great friend of the show, Shoto Arcade. All right. Oh, cool name, dude. Yeah. Great name, great guy. Lives in Japan, actually. He oh, does. He, he does. offered us a high rise billboard. I saw for him. a free expansion. I saw your apartment, bro. Very cool apartment. Very for free nice. expansion. Very jealous. Those mountains in the distance. <laughs> that option's over because he signed up. Welcome in, <laughs> Shadow Arcade. Yes. Shadow Arcade. Thank you so much for the support. Thank you to all you guys for being here and for supporting the show. You truly do make the belief hole deep and wide. Yeah, don't worry, Dogman Whispers, your names will be read when we get there to the Dogman Whispers with extra zest and zeal. Oh, we haven't reached the Dogman Whispers Not yet. yet. They're coming, though. We're almost there. Yeah, hang in there, Black Eyed Cool Kids, Dogman Whispers. We are still catching up if you haven't heard your name. But again, yeah, thank you guys so much. Um, it's bad. What did you guys think of the episode? Do you guys... Uh, I thought it was cool. think the Not Deer is weird. a thing? I have to give a special thank you or shout out to That Would Be Rad Podcast. Oh, yeah. I'd never heard of the Not Deer, and I follow their Instagram, and they always have really cool images for their uh, shows. And uh, if you guys like paranormal, cryptid stuff, dash of retro 80s... Retro nostalgia. Film discussion. And just some cool guys. Check out their show. That Would Be Rad. But I have to thank them because I'd never heard of Not Deer and I saw that as an episode. I didn't listen to it because I don't like to listen to other podcasts before doing a show generally, but I'm going to check it out now and I'm sure it's great because their stuff's good. But thank you for the accidental recommendation, I would say. Oh, and real quick, congratulations to Scott of Freaky Deaky. He's a dad. Oh yeah. He is a dad to a brand new little baby boy. So congratulations, buddy. Yeah. Guys, if you haven't followed the Freaky Deaky, if you haven't listened to Freaky Deaky podcast, go check it out. They're great people. And now he's a new dad. And that's freaking awesome. So check that out. Um, and yeah, anyone out there in Appalachia or anywhere that has seen something anomalous or strange or something not dear esque or anything, let us know. Go to bluefield.com and click on hover your cursor over listener stories and then click on the share your story button. Yeah. Or scroll to the bottom of any page and you'll see it on the right side. So right side. We want to hear your stories, guys, and we appreciate everyone who sent them in. Absolutely. Because it's, it's great. It's special stuff. We're archiving the weird, cross-corroborating the paranormal. Well, thank you for being here. Yes. Stay out of the woods. Or go in cautiously with friends. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great warning. All right, guys. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next time on Belief Hole. Hole.
see a herd of deer, whatever you do, don't stop the car. <laughs> okay. I'll do that again. <laughs> Please. If you see a herd of deer, whatever you do, don't stop the car. <laughs> okay. That was even better. All right, one more so time. this is her friend who's. No, from, I'll do it. I'm just letting you know. It's, this is her friend who's from the reservation. Don't stop the car. <laughs> okay. A farmer, Sylvester Scott, was spreading fertilizer when he noticed his dogs were restful and excited. What does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I restful, both restful and excited. John, have you ever been restful and excited? I'm sure. What does that feel like? Maybe restless is what it's supposed to say. Oh, maybe. Maybe it's a typo. Restful and excited seems like well, a if you're like, contradiction. If you slept well and you've got a big day planned. That's you true. Go. You've convinced me that's probably... Or you, <laughs> or you ate like two plates of lasagna and have just put on a great film. So you're just going to lay there <laughs> and Restful watch. and excited. The Garfield experience. All right, continue. In a car at night in a rural, heavily wooded area, it's not wildly uncommon to see a, an opossum crossing the road. The possum? Yeah. For just pronounced possum. It says a possum. That's how you spell it, but it's just possum. Oh, like Bologna? Like Bologna. Champagne? I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't stop the car. We are grateful to so many of you for supporting the show. I love you always, forever, near and far, closer together, everywhere. Okay, I will be with stop. you, everything I will do for you. <laughs> now okay, now here we go. We're going to get a Savage Garden everywhere. copyright strike. It's not, that's not, not Savage, Savage Garden. Garden. It's, a, it's a gal who sings that. Oh, is that I, Gina G? Yeah. Who are just a little bit? No. I don't know. But let's go. Let's do the show. Let's do the show. Okay. <laughs> 